Blessed Sunday morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. And as always, I try to encourage each and every one of us as born-again believers in Jesus Christ. Providentially speaking today on Sunday, if you can, get to church to fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ who will be sharing with you the uh, eternal weight of glory that we read of in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Be with brothers and sisters in Christ who are going to be sharing the crown of life with you as we read in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. And this crown of life, the Apostle Peter reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, will not fade away. See, all the things that people are trying to fight for and live for here on earth will fade away. Recently, I seen a boxer, uh, Tommy Hearns, his name is uh, on TV recently. And I used to do some boxing and karate and weightlifting a lot when I was younger. And um, he was a tough fighter, could punch very hard, could knock out a horse with his hands 40 years ago. But now, 40 years later, the poor man could barely walk up a flight of stairs. You see, the glory that we try to attain here in life is only temporary. But the eternal glory we have in Christ will never fade away. And go to church today, if you can, to share with those who will be with you in heaven. And today, the thought for the day goes through Deuteronomy chapter 6. When it came to verses 7 and 9, it speaks about children and the importance of raising them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord uh, with the commands of God. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 tells us, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they grow up, they won't depart from that way. Children are a blessing from God. Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5 reminds us of that. And even grandchildren, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6 tells us, are crowned for the aged. Children were so important, even to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth, that he said we must come to him as little children, and that if we cause one of these little children that believed in him to fall away and stumble, it would be better for that person to have a millstone cast around their neck and thrown into the sea. We read that in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. And I feel like that is what is happening in our culture today in America. The nation is falling into a sea of forgetfulness because of sin and because of what we're doing to our children. By the grace of God, by the will of God, the Lord has allowed me to work with children for over 31 years now between a group home and now in a public school setting. And I've seen the effects that lack of parenthood or the, the lack of guidance from parents and the care and love what it's done to children they're cast off into a system <clears throat> that the state runs and um, basically really doesn't care for them it's all about money it's dollars and cents um, for those parents that try to take care of their children and they have to work they shuffle them off to uh, the public schools where they're indoctrinated for seven, eight hours a day. I see it, I work with it. I've seen it with my own children. My children, my two daughters, they're 26 and 23, were raised in a Christian home, went to a good Bible-believing church. As soon as they went to school, college, the colleges will fill them with progressive liberal ideology that tries to steer them away from the Word of God, uh, with evolution and all these other uh, things that they teach them. Today, we see the politicians in our country, which should be serving and protecting the citizens of the land, telling children that they can have sex change operations, hormone blockers at a young age without their parental uh, consent. What do you think will happen to a people when we do these things to our children that were precious in the sight of God? My friends today, I encourage you, if you have children, to pray for them. D.L. Moody was born in 1837. He died in 1899. And he once said that our prayers should be fervent, crying out to God for the children of the land. Moody saw this in the 19th century in America, 
how children were being exploited even back then. Again, there's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 tells us, our first parents, Adam and Eve, had two children. One killed the other right away from the fall in Genesis 3 to the killing of Abel by his brother Cain in Genesis chapter 4. So there's nothing new under the sun. But as time is going on, the perversions and the laws and the, how could I say, the sin and the deceitfulness of sin and iniquity is getting worse and worse. There's a great falling away. Statistics show that only 1% of millennials in Generation Z, which are young, the young people of our culture today, have a biblical worldview of life. Why is this happening? Much of it is to be blamed to parents. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 tells us, Fathers, do not cause your children to be angry, but raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Parent, fathers especially are not around, and if they are around, they're not allowed to raise their children properly, uh, not getting the support from, them, from others around them. And this is why we see what's called the moral collapse of our society. When things are not done God's way, things fall apart. My friends today, let us learn to pray for our children, love them. Mine are older. My influence on them is waning. As children get older, the parents' influence gets less and less. I could pray for them, give them advice, be there for them when they need me. But if your children are younger, impress on them the word of God. Encourage them to follow the ways of God. Thomas Watson was a Puritan born in 1620 he died in 1686 he gave a word of encouragement that God's deliverance and salvation shines the brightest when we're going through the darkest times in our lives in our country here in America things are very dark morally spiritually economically we have politicians that are passing laws that are telling children they could do whatever they want with their bodies without any consequences. Well, there are consequences because when children do things like that, suicide rates skyrocket, depression, anxiety skyrockets. I often have told my children, we live in a nation that's free, but freedom can be costly and freedom can come with consequences. When you do things outside of God's will, you will pay the piper, so to speak. Your sin will find you out. Numbers chapter 32 verse 23 reminded us of that when we were going through the book of Numbers. You can run, but you can't hide from God. It is better to do things God's way. I grieve over this nation that has caused our children to stumble. And as I said before, I feel like America is being like cast into a sea with a big rock around its neck. Because we're causing our children to stumble. Let us pray for revival. Let us pray for the upcoming election. Let us pray that there'll be a revival of some sanity back in our country, some moral back, uh, uh, backbone, that we would have laws again to protect our land. Children are being exploited at the border because of open borders. Sex trafficking has become a major crisis down there. With, I heard like up to 1.5 million young girls under the age of 13 are being exploited as human trafficking. It's like slavery. It's like sex slavery. We fought to fight slavery back in the 19th century to abolish it. And today we're closing our eyes to what's going on. My friends, let us learn to know that despite the darkness that's in our land, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is still the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. Let us let our light shine so others will see the glory of God, and maybe many will give their lives to Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Lord, we pray for our children, the children of the land, those that are growing up in a culture that is rapidly deteriorating and falling away from the truth of your word. We pray for revival. We pray for your mercy or reprieve on our nation, Lord God. May all who watch this video have an earnest desire to pray for the young. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.